Hi, this is Stacy with Gooseberry Bridge Farm. Today I'm going to do a quick video on what flowers you should grow if you are new to flowers and new to flower farming, new to you pick, any of that. These are my top recommendations. Alright, obviously this will vary based on climates and all sorts of things like we are in zone 6 and uh, southwest Missouri we get really hot humid summers not as hot as Texas but hot um, so we're gonna start in order number one don't skip definitely plant these is zinnias these are beautiful different um, varieties there's so many choices I've got these two long rows and those two rows back there plus I've got some smaller successions for later in the season succession planting is another thing you really want to plan for if you're wanting to have flowers all summer because this is my first succession it's mid-july they look pretty good they're doing well these are primarily Oklahoma zinnias with some um, benaries in the back and some tiny little one inch sun bows in the front over here. I will show you those because they're adorable. Look how cute. There we go. Cute and tiny. Um, I did two rows of these. And this is what I mean by they get tired and fungusy over time. This plant I probably should just completely remove anything like this will eventually spread through the whole plant it'll eventually start making the flowers splotchy and look sad but for now i've got like a little bit right here a little bit over there and the rest are looking really healthy i don't really want to take them out because it will look worse and i have all of these plus some more on the other side and some more in the back that are planted later it'll take them longer before they get to that point um They're easy to grow. You can theoretically direct sow them. People do it, I don't do it. I start these around the end of April and transplant them out about the same time as tomatoes when the nighttime temperatures are above 50. Butterflies are very happy out here today. So number two behind the zinnias is giant marigolds. Um, generally very easy to grow they are um, they actually people don't like the smell of marigold foliage sometimes but if you cut the flowers off and remove all the leaves they actually smell pretty good these are giant and beautiful and they even keep their color when you dry them I don't plant quite as many of these and I don't do successions in the marigolds Remember, Three is going to be Celosia. This is plume Celosia. I don't grow the coxcomb um, brainy looking variety because it's more of a one and done cut flower. This stuff is a um, summer workhorse. This will just keep going whether we deadhead it or not, whether I keep up with it. It comes in all different colors, different shapes. Some are more like a, a big single stem, some are really branchy, um, there's just all kinds of stuff in here. And these are all grown from saved seed, it's really easy to save the seeds, buy celosia seeds once, you pretty much never have to buy them again unless you're looking for new colors. So, which I did last year, got some new colors and now I saved the seeds and now I've got the new colors again like that one. And I planted way too much. It's also over here. There's a whole nother row. And I had enough to do a whole nother row, but I didn't plant them. So here we are. I think we're on number four and that's going to be Cosmos. These are Cosmos. They are super easy to grow. Another one that you can usually direct seed, but I don't because, um, like I said, my 
just don't have good luck with direct seating. Part of it is our no-till practices and part of it is the um, birds and things like to eat it and slugs like to eat my seedlings, but here we are. The These are a later succession of Cosmos, so that's another one I would recommend succession planting. Okay, next is single stem sunflowers um, and branching sunflowers. So really, it's up to you. I've had some major pest issues this year with um, head clipping, um, what are they called? Head clipping weevils. And in case you ever get those, they do this. They just like chop the, the sunflower head off, which really, really sucks. Because there's another one. Um, because they, um, they're just little jerks cutting off my sunflowers. What I'm looking for is the, the female head clipping weevil. Um, what they do is they chop off the top of the plant and then they lay their eggs in the flower head. Um, and sometimes they're still there, like hanging out, feeding on the plant. The good things about them are that there's only one generation a year. Gosh, why did they do that? Um, so they don't, like, they aren't gonna mess with me all summer. But we plant, um, you can see all these guys are close to ready. We plant about 250 single stem sunflowers every seven to ten days or so. So this is the next succession that's about to open. There's some that are really, really close. These are, oh, now I've done it. These are all pro-cut varieties. Um, don't waste your money on other varieties if you're going for cut flowers. Uh, for, oh, there's another one that's open. For single stems, they are a pollenless variety. Just order the seeds. There's, you'll get a lot more consistent results with pro-cuts. So the other, these other smaller rows are succession planted things. Um, we're going to go talk about branching sunflowers, that's what this is, another succession of cosmos, that's another succession of, actually two, of zinnias, and that is more the, the next line up of single stem sunflowers, the next two successions. You can see the size difference, half the row is one, and then the next one. So these guys up here are my branching sunflowers, and these are actually not a pollenless variety. These are mostly um, autumn beauty branching sunflowers and I primarily plant them to look pretty so, because I cut all of my pro cuts and um, kind of ration how many each you pick person gets. That way people don't come out and fill their entire container with pro cut sunflowers but they can still take pictures with these sunflowers, which in a couple more weeks, this will be like a huge wall of sunflowers. Plus these don't make good cut flowers because they drop a lot of pollen, but by leaving them here, um, the bees all have something to eat because I feel bad cutting them for cutting the other ones. Look at that one way up there. That's like a good 15 feet tall. They're huge. Um, and I do have support netting under these, which barely does anything, but it does help when they're smaller and they haven't had them fall down yet. And you get fun volunteers like this guy. Um, just gotta let them grow. That one just came up and that one and that one. I don't know why this one over here is so short, but all right. So that covers sunflowers for cutting get the single stem pro cuts, everything else, get something pretty. And that, is that our last flower? We had zinnias, marigolds, celosia, cosmos, and some flowers. I think I actually covered all of them already. So these are all easy, heat loving. Um, they do pretty reasonably with drought. And then, uh, okay, I say heat loving, they really don't want it to be over 100 degrees, but 90s are fine. The Cosmos especially just kind of get sad if it's really, really hot. Um, I do grow a lot of other things here, obviously. I'm carrying around my wad of dead sunflowers. 
Here is another smaller succession of zinnias. They're just starting to bloom. I really need to cut those off. And I grow a lot of things that are kind of blah looking right now because they are um, they bloom earlier, like snapdragons. This feverfew is on its way out. The chamomile, the calendula. Um, uh, this is scabiosa, which actually looks beautiful right now, but is normally kind of pittering out by July. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in here. It's all mixed together so that I would have a longer bloom time. Um, and I've got lots of status over there, which is pretty easy to grow. And straw flowers because I love them. This is another row of um, another row of branching. No, not branching. Of single stem sunflower successions. This was actually where we planted the first ones, and they are done. So the next succession that's still in the trays right now will go like right here, and these will all come out. There's still a few left to bloom. Just a few, like. This one, that one, and then that one. That was another one that the bugs got, and another one that the bugs got. Um, but most of them are done. And I've never had problems like this with these head clipping weevils. I'm really hoping that um, removing all of their uh, eggs by removing these flower heads is going to help. Because last year I had a few of them and I didn't know about removing the heads. So I probably just let them all grow and hatch out for this year and now they're worse. Oh, there we go. Anyway, and uh, yep, I'm getting all sorts of distracted by these dead things. So I'm, what I'm doing with these is I either feed them to my pigs or the cows. Both will eat the entire head. Um, or I bring them over here and dump them in a bucket of soapy water and just leave it there, which it's getting pretty gross. So I won't show you that. Got a lot of weeds in here where my snapdragons kind of rotted. And then I have more solutia. I told you it was easy to grow. And I've got a bucket full of status that I picked last night and didn't hang up to dry. Alright, I better dry that. Anyway, long story short, you can pick full beautiful bouquets with just those five flowers. Honestly, most people who come out to pick flowers, that's all they really care about is the zinnias and sunflowers. And you kind of have to talk them into adding some other um, flowers. Not everybody, but lots of people. And uh, it just simplifies your life while you're learning and makes it a little bit less expensive to get into this. My glasses are melting off my face. It's hot, so I'm gonna go inside. See you next time.